All right, guys, here we are again for our TNCBA's tips, tricks, and how-tos. And as we told you last week, we're focused on offshore. That's going to be our focus here for this month. We've got Gunnersville that we're at actually right now while y'all listen to this. Again, all these are kind of pre-recorded. We kind of lay them out how we, we feel like we want to talk about things and where we think everything should be. I'd love to say it's going great. <laughs> I would love to say right now, Kelsey has a really, really bad tan. He's got some I'm sunglass sunburned. lines. He's sunburned. He probably yeah. is peeling almost yeah. already. Just picture all that. It's okay. Just picture all that. So we're focused on offshore. Last week, we kind of talked about what you're looking at offshore, what you're thinking about, what those those basic things when you start to move out off the bank and you're looking and graphing and what you're looking at. This week, Kelsey's going to talk to you about some essential baits, kind of his key rotation that he likes to take with him out there Uh first thing this is what his go-to is so Kelsey oh, yeah. I'll let you kind of take it away on what well, your I mean, essentials are so one of my key essentials would be a Carolina rig that's that's going to be one of my number one go-to's it's mm -hmm. it's it's a very good way a very efficient way to locate fish right. um, when you're when you're going offshore um, you may not catch the biggest one in the crowd a lot of times but I mean you still have that possibility right. but it's a very efficient bait getting out there gets on the bottom you you got to think about it you're dragging a worm and that I like to throw a five inch Cinco style bait. So, you know, you drag it, it floats up and then it floats, it just simmers back down. So yeah. it, it's a very efficient way of right. covering water one. And I feel like it gets those fish that are just up off the bottom. Cause yeah. I, I like to throw it on anywhere between a 18 to 24 inch leader. And that's so, the nice thing with the Carolina rig. Like you yeah. can adjust that. So if you yeah. need, if you want to try to pinpoint fish a little bit closer to the bottom yeah. or a little bit more up off the bottom you can adjust that exactly and it's nicely so nicely used. so as far as setup on that i'm going to throw a, an ounce tungsten sinker and i like to uh, just preference i like to use glass beads mm -hmm. i feel like it makes a little more sound it get yeah. it gets their attention a little bit better but i'm going to throw that on 14 pound fluorocarbon dragging across the bottom i, I go a little light i guess the, yeah. the most but i'm going to throw it on 14 pound fluorocarbon with a 10 pound liter so that way if for some reason there is type, some type of structure my hook's exposed or whatever i'll still get the majority of that rig back because it is aggravating okay. so I, I throw a lighter leader i throw a 10 pound leader now the lighter leader you you say for like in case you get hung up yes but you also feel like that lighter leader gives a little more action to the bait that too than yes. the 14 pound test now you mentioned a one ounce weight so we've talked a little bit between Douglas and, and Gunnersville because again, we're on Gunnersville right now. And then we have Douglas coming up at the end of the month as, which will be another offshore deal at night. But tell me this, are you still throwing the ounce? Cause Douglas, they set up, they tend to set up deeper, you know, they're yeah. going to be set up in that 30, 25 to 35 foot range. I like to stick around an ounce. Sometimes okay. I'll go to an ounce and quarter ounce and ounce and a half. Really? Just okay. Sometimes. Yeah. I still throw that heavy, heavy weight because just, to get, uh, it down just to get it down there, get it to the bottom um heck on douglas i can think of many instances i've caught fish out of 50 foot of water on a carolina rig yeah uh during one of the bfls or something like that so i'll i'll just my main focus is bottom contact right making sure i'm in contact with the bottom okay so you got you got 10 on the leader you've got a, an ounce weight somewhere in that neighborhood mm -hmm. to keep you in contact with the bottom and again another great thing about uh, you heard us talk about bottom contour in the last video, finding some hard spots. That Carolina rig is a great way to, to figure out what kind of bottom well, that you're in. And especially throwing it with a tungsten weight, I feel like you just get a lot. Yeah. They're, they're more sensitive. You're getting a better feel of what's down there. Yeah, for so, sure. I mean, for sure. That, that's another good reason. I like to go back to that. I like to throw that Carolina rig. You have a better idea of what you're pulling through. You yeah, can okay. tell when you're, in the, when you're in the juice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... so so coming back up, 14 pound test. What kind of rod are you throwing this thing? I'm on? throwing it on a seven foot medium heavy. Okay. I, I don't I don't get too crazy. I, I like yeah. to stick to that seven foot range on my rods. Yeah. I'm a shorter guy. I, I I have a lot of maneuverability with them. So seven foot medium heavy, a little bit more of a uh, fast a faster tip. tip, extra fast tip. I want it to be a little more stiff in that in yeah. that rod tip. And the um, thing is, guys. The, the extra fast tip here is important because you're so deep yeah or well, so much line out yeah you, i mean i'm making your bomb pass yeah. I'm, I'm i'm just flinging it out there as so far as you've got to be able to get that hook into that fish so that extra fast tip gets it into that backbone exactly. a little bit quicker so you're not going to be you don't want that super just limber 
Crankbaits, yeah, it, it's okay yeah. because you want it to, you're playing with treble hooks. But yeah, definitely yeah. in this case, that medium well, heavy. Now that you said something about crankbaits, let's just go into that right, as far as our, our essentials. Um, a lot of times, um, just depending on where you're at. So on Douglas, you're probably going to be long lining or if you can't, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna, some tournaments, don't some tournaments won't allow that. you do that. have the 8XD and the 10XD yeah. that you can the, go to. So um, a lot of times I'm going to focus on probably a 10XD or mm-hmm. an 8XD, one of the two. If you're long lining, cast as far as out there. I, I, now, I go a little, I don't know what kind of line you throw. Well, let's say, what, what kind of, what size line do you throw when you're doing that? Well, it depends, like, it depends on the bait. So if I'm throwing a 6XD, I'm throwing 10. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use, because I want to get maximum depth okay. out of that 6XD when I'm working it. Um, I personally have not done a lot of long lining. Mm -hmm. Um, And like the 6XD is great as those fish are just starting to move out and they're maybe on some of those shallower offshore areas. Um, But for the 10XD or 8XD, I'm going up to 12. See, I'm I'm sticking with 10. Oh, I like, I I like, I like, it is a lot of bait. But I mean, a lot of times I feel like just, sometimes you get, you get an extra depth, but I mean, I just, Feel like I just I prefer going with that ladder line, getting down there, and you get and you get some good action on the bait. You get a lot of good action that. on that bait, and a lot of times when you're catching them like that, you really don't know you have a fish till it's about halfway back to the boat. A lot you don't really feel them bite a lot of times. You don't it's just, feel it. It just gets heavier. Yeah. So on the crank bait. That, that time of year, I, I definitely yeah. agree with you. On so, it just kind of turns into mush. So with that, I'm going to throw a. Now I still go with a shorter rod. Yeah. I go with a seven foot medium mm-hmm. action rod. Okay. And it's going to be a lot more limber. It's going to yeah. be like more of a moderate tip, mm-hmm. more or less. So I got a, I, I don't necessarily, when I hit the bottom or whatever, I have a lot of time to deflect or whatever. Yeah. And it, 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 it gives me more reaction time, more or less. Yeah. It, it allows that rod to do more of the work and set the hook. It's got a good backbone, yeah. but I'm letting the rod do more, most of the work. So on my 6XD, I'm going to be throwing, I'm going to throw it on a medium action rod, just like you. The only difference is I'm gonna be throwing a seven six. Try to help me get just a little bit more casting distance out there because that's a big thing about oh, the yeah. crankbait. Is when you think about the crankbait, you're you're throwing it out there and it's gonna pendulum down. It's gonna dig as far as it can until it starts to come back up to the boat. Exactly. So the further you can throw it out here, the longer it's gonna get down and start going down through there. So yeah. a little bit longer rod sometimes can help with and, that casting. And distance. I'll say reel is key. Mm, the reels are definitely. key when you're doing stuff like that. So. I'm mostly a Shimano guy, but I yeah. stick with the Revo winch, the Abbott yeah. Garcia Revo winch on that. It's a five, four to one. It does it, not wear you out. It doesn't wear you out, guys, because I mean, you you doing that on like a six, two to one, so oh, you, you're gonna those big crank baits wear yourself out. Yeah, with that thing, I throw it out there, and it's 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 like I'm reeling in a bandit. Yeah, it's just butter. I mean, it's butter. It, I love the it's, winch. It's super smooth. It doesn't wear you out. So reel is key. Those those lower gear ratios. It's yeah. bigger gears. It, it doesn't take as it doesn't take as much. So the crankbait's an awesome deal uh, to get out there, and it's something that you can fire through there and fish quick. Yeah. And one thing that we know a lot of times with with some of the bigger bass in the school, if you get something running through there really quick, mm-hmm. they're some of the first ones to react to that. Exactly. Whereas if you throw something a little bit slower into these schools, some of the smaller fish can sometimes beat them oh, yeah. to it. So sometimes if you're going in. You're going to be thinking about trying to throw a moving bait or a really big bait first to try to get those first big fish. So a Carolina rig, a crank bait. What's going to be swim your baits? Next? Swim baits. Swim baits would okay. be another good one. Um, if you look right here on the front, there's yep. a big six inch. It's a basically like a contact style swim bait. Yep. But you can do that, or you can throw like the uh, scrounger head type deal. You can um, the scrounger the, head. Vi- it's basically like a vibrating jig in a you way. We actually got a picture here just to throw up. You can see the scrounger head there on the left there next to the the football jig and the the swim bait there as well. Just a paddle tail versus that jerky J that, that from Castake yeah. that's on that scrounger head. Yeah. That's going to be another key bait that I go to um, just to try and. Mimic those bait fish that are down there. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really, tar- I mean, throwing the big baits, what I'm going to go for when I'm and going there. And especially on Gunnersville, because we're oh, talking yeah. about gizzard shad in this case, uh, mixed with thread fin as well, where Douglas is a little more thread fin yeah. based. Um, but again, those gizzard shad, they get big. Oh, yeah. So throwing I've a seen big them swim up bait. three pounds. I yeah. mean, they're huge. Gizzard shad are insane, and you find them around those bridge pylons and stuff down there. So, so those things are huge. And the swim bait is an- another one that I feel like sometimes if – 
if the flow is a little bit more is a little bit less it's a very yeah. subtle bait yeah it, it's more of a finesse and you can work it through that water yeah. column in different places because we did talk about in the last video that sometimes those fish will be they'll be up off the bottom yeah. a little bit they'll be a little bit suspended instead of right there on the bottom so i like the swim bait so Swim bait, are you bulking up the line just a little bit with that? I'm going to throw 14 pounds. So we're going to throw 14? So 14 pounds. Okay. And I'm going to th uh, throw it on a, I'm actually, the rod that I throw it on is actually a 6.8 really? medium heavy. Yeah, okay. it's it's a it's a little bit shorter. That's just the, the rod that right. I prefer to throw my swim baits on. Um, it's it's kind of got a good tip to it. Yeah. So like when you're throwing a swim bait, you know, a lot of times those fish will hit it yeah. and, and they'll miss it. And a lot of times when I'm throwing a swim bait, I'm waiting until that rod starts to load up before yeah, I try to set you gotta it. Let so, take it. So you want something with a little more tip, even though it's still deep. And I normally throw a, a higher gear ratio reel so I can catch up with them, okay. do whatever. So I do a lot of reel and lean when I do that. So I'm going to be throwing more of a 6.2 to 1 okay. gear ratio reel, 14-pound um, line, like I said, so with that 6.8 rod with a little, little bit limber tip. Okay. So we got our swim bait. I'm a little bit different in, in the aspect when I'm throwing these heavier heads on these these swim baits. I like to go for uh, what is my big cranking rod, which is a 711. Uh, it's a medium heavy action um, with with a little extra in that tip because, like you said, you like for them to get it yeah. and just kind of load into them. Uh, and the only other thing I switch up a little bit is a five four to one. You're good at slowing down. You're good at being able to control yourself. I am not. So we'll like see. that six two to one. I can't slow myself when down. when I when I'm really I'm I'm doing like I would slow roll a spinnerbait. Right. I'm just I'm right. just doing that right there. And so you're and good at that as opposed to me. So I go to that five four to one to slow myself down a little bit more and keep it on the bottom. Um, so again, a swim bait, and again, change the size of the head. Those J Will swim bait uh, heads are, are some of the best out there for these bigger, deeper uh, swim baits that you're gonna be throwing. We just change it up based on the depth. Um, so that's one thing you always got to keep paying attention to. I might even have a couple rigged up laying right there in the bait tray mm -hmm. just in case like I move to a shallower hump or something like that or I move out to a really deep point. I'll have my really heavy uh, swim bait head on there for that. Um, so a swim bait, a Carolina rig, a crankbait, crank bait, and then what, anything else that one, is one, essential for you? One last thing would be a big football head jig yeah. uh, or, or uh, yeah a big football yeah, head jig for sure um and you can see going, going down to gunnersville you can do one of two things you can either throw black and blue with a green pumpkin trailer that's big. or you can do a green pumpkin jig with a black and blue trailer they like that for they some really reason like that, that is that, one of those combination things. thing it, it, it's that combination i imagine it it, it imitates like like we were talking about earlier bluegill something like that brim some type of bait fish is what i would imagine mm -hmm. it's it's targeting but um those are going to be one of the things i throw um i'm going to throw that on a seven foot medium heavy yeah 14 pound line uh, i like my 14 pound gotcha. line with a six four to one gear ratio reel um tip's still going to be a little bit limber because because i want it to more or less load into that fish yeah. um, i don't want to jerk it out of their mouth or whatever right. but you can't you can't miss <laughs> <laughs> a football jig fish. I mean, they, they, that's just the way they, they bite it. It's so that much is fun. True. That is true. But, and one thing I really like about the football head jig, for for me, in comparison with the Carolina rig, I feel like, especially when you're offshore and you're kind of hitting a certain spot, mm -hmm. the football head jig really allows me to be more accurate. Yeah, more precise. In, in yeah. my casting, especially sometimes with that Carolina rig, you get an even longer yeah. leader out there. Yeah. And it's a little bit harder sometimes for me to cast it. But I do like that about the football jig well, that you can make very accurate casts. Going back to one of my most memorable trips down yep. there, we caught over 100 fish that day. Yeah. And we were fishing a spot that was no bigger than a Volkswagen bug. Yeah. And if you cast anywhere 10 foot to the left, 10 foot to the right, you miss the school. Right. And, I mean, we, we caught 100 fish off of that, that, yep. that one spot. So being accurate and hitting those spots is, is super exactly. key whenever you're offshore fishing. So, guys, these baits that we've talked about here, these essentials, they are things that you can go out there and you can do. Now, are these going to always be the key? No. But we're going to talk about some different things you can try in some of our next videos coming up. But again, these are those essentials that we like to roll out there with. These are our first go-tos. If we know we're going to an offshore situation where we're going to be fishing ledges or drops or whatever, these are going to be sitting on the deck of our boats. 
first thing that morning, and that's going to be our rotation to get them fired up, see what we can do to get these offshore fish going. These schools, they're fun when you get them fired up, and you're catching multiple fish on repeated casts to that same area. Oh, yeah. So, guys, get out there, rig up some rods with a Carolina rig, a football jig, a crankbait, a swim bait, and go out there and have you some fun. Guys, we'll see you on the next Tips, Tricks, and How-Tos. Take care.